So, are there more questions? Do you have more questions? Hi, Ezra. Good to have you. Look, we can take it in few ways. We can look at and recognize that who we are is changeless awareness. Who one truly is never experienced anything. So ultimately nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened, nothing is ever happening, and nothing will ever happen. Yet, be honest. If that's your realization, then abide as that eternally. If that's not your experience, then look forward to live fully live, really truly go deep within, really explore yourself, really go in all the places that you might don't even know, dive deep within, explore all the places that you wish to avoid or you're running away or you're not ready to explore. Create anything you wish as being the creator, as being free. Live fully. Ezra, I'm aware of certain sensations in the body that are associated with thoughts. Even though I can dwell in awareness for brief periods, when I realize the experience, the sensation and thought associations are still there. The thought then comes, I either avoid the triggers and stay clear of the touchy subject, or I need to go through it to be free of it. I'm not sure which approach to take, and when I think of going through, I have doubt. Thank you. I'm aware of certain sensations in the body that are associated with thoughts. Sensation in the body when they are associated with thoughts, it's always either emotions or labeling the sensations. Yes? So I can label discomfort. I can label pain. I can label wow, that feels really great, yes? Or I can have an emotion, and let's talk about negative emotion, or it can be positive emotion. If it's a negative emotion, then I, then I'm, I automatically react to it, resist it. That means I get attached to it. So it's actually sustained inside the system, inside the field of awareness, active in the field of of awareness. So there is another sensation which would be neutral. So I can have negative sensation, positive sensation, and neutral sensation. So when there is an awareness and your attention is fully on awareness, the sensation is neutral. So it's not good, it's not bad, it's not positive, it's not negative. That's when it's neutral, the mind is clear, and, and that's a sattvic mind, and in that moment, awareness shines through, and it takes most of the presence, okay? So, that can happen when you dwell, yeah, 
even though I can dwell in awareness for a brief period, when I re-arise, it's not that the you re-arise, the, the thought I arise, the experience, the sensation and thought association are still there. That means that it's still calling your attention to really take a look at it. And the way you want to take a look at it is it calls your attention so you want to be really interested in it. Really be excited. Wow! I really love to examine what ideas I am holding in my mind that cause me these sensations, these emotions. Or you can actually choose to let go of all negative beliefs and be free. And by doing so mentally, you're not resisting, so you allow the charged energy to be released. So, if I shift the attention from anything I resist to awareness, if I can stay as the presence of awareness and that resistance comes into the surface without misidentifying, that means no resistance, it releases itself. Now, it's not something that I can decide or choose. So it, it fluctuates internally. So if I do resist, what I want to approach it with curiosity, with excitement, with, wow, I'm really interested to explore the resistance. I want to um, examine who is aware of it, where am I looking at it, from where am I watching it. Without a thought, what would be the experience? Who is aware? Am I the one who is resisting it? Am I the one who is reacting to it? And as I ask the question, I invite all of you to really look internally, realize what you meet. Are you meeting you, meeting you? So, I just repeat, you either, you either shift the attention to the presence of awareness and allow everything to come into the surface and clear itself, if it's possible, or the other, interested in the resistance. Be interested in the reactivity. Anyone that is actually serious earnest in doing this work and not just memorizing or knowing or learning just the concepts, the idea that might be spoken yet are empty, is to be interested in the reactivity. Be interested in the resistance. This is taking responsibility. I'm going to be responsible to what's going inside me. Feelings, sensations, thoughts. And of course awareness. Yet, I would be interested in thoughts and feelings, thoughts and sensations, because 
that's the only relationship there is. Awareness has no relationship. It doesn't relate to thoughts, feelings, or emotions. So, if you're sincere, which I know you are, and you're taking this work seriously, because if you don't, empty concepts do not deliver, and philosophy is just a bridge, it's just a boat, and ultimately it's what is the experience, every moment, every moment, and every moment is a new moment, so the experience is fresh, 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 so everything that is inside in the storage comes into the surface, you want to be interested in the reactivity, You're, you want to be interested in the resistance, you want to be interested in when you feel that you are a victim, when you blame, when you complain, because that's the subject of today, Com responsibility. And when we don't take responsibilities, when we complain, blame, point out, it's because the circumstances, it's because these people, it's because something outside of me, which a lot of times I don't have control over, so I'm helpless. So anyone who does this work seriously, whether are monks or people who renounce, they always, always look for the reactivity to see if any residue of false identification is left there. Because all our personality is reactivity. So all the reactivity is the false misidentification. And personality is, can be many, many generations, many, many, many lifetimes. Is not only what we are familiar in this life. So be excited, love it, find what's, what's about it as a gift when it arises, although it's not comfortable. So you approach it from the higher self. Because the higher self always accepts everything. So if you can ex look at any emotion, any negativity, any reactivity, any resistance, as from total acceptance, acceptance, from total love, from goodness itself, then you are looking it, you're looking it from the eyes of the source, the eyes of awareness itself. So I hope that helps and approach it with inspiration, with excitement, with joy, with love. Chris. Hi Chris. I'm so happy you're here. So the question, can you speak of illusion and delusion in the relationship to thoughts about perceptions of external circumstances? Well, I don't understand completely the question. Can you speak of illusion and delusion? Okay, I'll, I'll start from there. When I take responsibility, I direct the mind. When I don't take responsibility, I am identifying with the mind, I am slave to the reactivity of the mind, okay? So that's the first thing to be aware of, that if I direct the mind, it's still an illusion, yes? So I can think, 
I'm ever free. I'm ever free. I'm ever free. I'm always free. I'm boundless awareness. I'm unaffected by any circumstances. I'm unaffected by any sensations. I'm unaffected by any thought. I am that which is aware. And you holding these thoughts and you concentrate the mind, these thoughts are an illusion, yet you are directing it. You're directing it as the creator, as a higher mind, not as the lower mind. The lower mind is the mind that reacts. The reactivity, which are the beliefs, it shouldn't be this way, they shouldn't behave this way, I think this is, these circumstances, life happening circumstances are better and this circumstances are worse and this is good, this is bad, this turns to be a delusion, okay? So illusion is that I consciously direct thoughts yet I see that there are thoughts and I do not identify or enslaved or believe the thoughts to be real, they are used as a vehicle they are used as a bridge. Yes? When it is delusion, it means I believe the thoughts to be real and I identify with them. That means when I think something should be different, that means I have a belief, I imagine so something should be different than what it is, that means I am deluded. So illusion is a thought and every thought is an illusion. Yet the moment I believe the thought to be real, that means I give it meaning and when I give the thought a meaning, it, tur it turns to be a belief, that's a delusion. So in terms of, I think that's points in terms of the question if I see life circumstances in, with equal eyes from source point of view, then I see the illusion exactly as it is. And through that, awareness shines through. Or when I hold on or I question, when I question every thought is an illusion. Yet because I don't identify with that, I don't believe it to be true. That means I don't derive the identity from the thought as the ultimate reality. And when I identify with the thought and I believe it to be true, that means a delusion. I am deluded, so I derive my identity from the thought and not from awareness. So I do not experience, no, know that I am awareness itself. So... Just I'll touch external circumstances. We do not experience the circumstances, so circumstances don't really matter ever. What matter is our interpretation in, my, or in our mind about the circumstances. The thoughts that we have about the circumstances really affects us or we feel them in the physical body. I think this is important for one to take in, that circumstances don't really matter. It's the thoughts we have about the circumstances that really matter 
because only the thoughts about the circumstances affects us. So we can have negative thoughts about the circumstances and it would affect us as negatively. And we can have positive thoughts about the circumstances and it would affect us positively. And if we understand that, that can change our life because we will take responsibility which thoughts to, to, to choose regarding every circumstances and once we'll choose a higher vibration of thoughts regarding any circumstances we are instantaneously transform our feeling our experience and our lives so I hope I hope that was helpful Chris Julie, hi. I'm very, very happy, very excited that you're here. Hello, Ezra. Thank you very much for sharing with us. My question is how to deal with an issue of not doing what I feel I should be doing. That brings me, I'll jump. I, I didn't finish the question, I'll come back to it. Is to um maybe you want to write it down everyone is invited if you wish is um do you have the courage to really commit commit to change your inner world so the outer world will follow your inner world and that's very powerful so have the courage to change have the courage to commit to yourself commit to yourself to do what you really want that makes you feel good and one of the practice that all of you are invited to do is for the next three months stop blaming and complaining complaining okay so stop blaming the environment stop blaming your neighbors the house you live your partners your children stop blaming the government stop blaming the job that you're working stop blaming the the boss stop blaming your employees stop blaming your business partners stop blaming everybody just this simple practice can open an amazing window for transformation in your life stop blaming stop complaining so that's the practice for the next three months make a commitment when to start and commit it to yourself and share it with the people around it around you so you are accountable to your commitment so they can point ah 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 you're complaining ah 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 you're blaming and even if they blame you don't complain even if they blame you and you feel bad don't blame them for feeling bad look within transform your inner world take responsibility take charge over your inner world and that's gonna transform your outer world so this is an invitation another thing that I would suggest to do is make a list where you don't take responsibility in your life and have the courage to change it so take a piece of paper and make a whole list and you can start start today if not the latest tomorrow or the following day I would suggest 
don't postpone because that's what the ego does. It's postponing for later because later never arrives, so it can keep postponing it, so it can run the show habitually without you really shifting and transforming your life. So be accountable, make a list of where you don't take responsibility and keep adding into the list because that will enable you to see where you're not responsible and don't judge yourself for not being responsible because that's the habit that all of us have or had and then make a choice, be courageous enough to when you encounter it again take responsibility, don't blame, don't complain investigate what is the belief that caused you to feel the way you feel and just either decide to let go of it just tell yourself I choose to let go of it and set myself free you can choose to give it love and be thankful that you're aware of it because awareness transforms everything yet the willingness to put the light upon it shed the light removes the darkness so again I repeat the practice for three months is to stop blaming and complaining it's very simple practice uh, make a commitment to start today commit it to yourself and share it with the people around you so they can hold you accountable for your commitment and uh, make a list where you're not responsible in your life so you can really put the light, shed the light upon it and notice when you are reactive and when you notice that you're reactive see how you can be responsive, responsible because when you're reactive you don't take responsibility and if you're slave to it, if it take over you and you keep going with that, you didn't stop and took responsibility and realize wait a minute, I am reactive because of ideas or belief I am having or because I'm deluded and not because of the circumstances, not because of the feelings not of because of the thoughts, it's because the belief, the underlying belief I'm holding that I wasn't even aware of. Okay, so let me see if a little bit more of your question, Julie. It seems, it seems no matter what I cannot do what I should be doing, I keep thinking that it is because there is a block and I cannot seem to find out what that block is. Thank you, Alon. I really like the way you are discussing this topic. Thank you. So, in order for to, it seems no matter what, I cannot do what I should be doing. I keep thinking that it is because there is a block and I cannot seem to find out what the, that block is. So, Typically, it's almost always the block is fear. What you can do, and I invite everyone to do, and I'm sorry I didn't plan to give you another practice, is to make a list of everything you expect in your life that is positive, that gives you aspiration, that um, makes you feel good, positive expectation. That will enable you to focus on what you want, even if it's small things that you expect. And if people are really want to take it only to spirituality, you can take it to enlightenment. 
I express, I expect to fix my attention permanently on that which is aware. I expect to um, my heart to be open permanently. I express, expect my mind to be clear in every situation. I expect to approach every negativity that appears in the field of awareness with loving kindness approach. I expect to be soft and gentle with every thought and emotion that appear within me. I expect to be compassionate. I expect to be always free. I expect, and you can take it freestyle. So what comes for me, and it's just an idea, just a suggestion, do a list every day for 30 days of positive expectation. The expectation is just a jumping board, a jumping like, like a board that you jump to a pool, which I don't remember the name of it. So I expect and you complete. I expect and you complete and as long as you feel good, it focuses your mind on what you want instead of why you cannot. Because it seems like my question is how to deal with an issue of not doing what I feel I should be doing. That means you focus, your attention is focused on what you, what issue of not doing what you feel you should be doing. Focus on what you expect. Focus on what you expect that makes you happy. Focus on what you expect that makes you happy. Ignore the circumstances of your life situation. So would you focus on what you expect and it makes you feel good, you are transforming your world and your reality is responding to that by feeling good. And leave the circumstances because otherwise it's reverse. You're reacting to circumstances and you have the belief that the circumstances don't allow you to create what you want as the creator. And I point, you can create whatever you want as the creator. Start writing what you expect for the highest for yourself. Aspire high. As long as it makes you feel good, it's just thoughts and feelings. Do it for 30 days and see what happens in your life. Anna, hola Anna, thank you for having you here. Hola Alon, this is Anna. When you say don't have resistance to, a, to an emotion or thought, example, like angry, and I have to allow, allow that this emotion and just be conscious of all the body sensation that is responsibility. Okay, let me clarify it. Thank you for asking. When you say don't have resistance, I cannot decide not to have resistance when I'm angry. Okay, first of all, anger is like a burst of energy that is released due to a belief. Yes, so now I'm feeling already anger, angry. Automatically, the mechanism is to resist it. So now it's like taking responsibility is recognized, okay, first of all, I am causing all of it. I'm not angry because anything outside of me means it's my partner my partner didn't cause me to be angry. When things didn't go the way I wanted them, it didn't that didn't cause me to be frustrated or angry and the way things are happening that doesn't cause me to be frustrated and angry it's an underlying belief that I don't see in that moment caused me to be angry so now I'm angry 
that's automatic. And now the next thing that happens, I resist the anger, that's automatic, autopilot. Now, when I take responsibilities, I choose to approach it in a loving, kind, loving or kind way. I, I choose to examine it. I choose to test what was causing me this anger, which idea inside me caused that. And when I see it, first of all, it is free, or I can choose to just let go of it. So I hope that really helps uh, in terms of resistance and uh, um, it explains what is responsibility. Um, and we can take it to what I saw about being responsive, means I'm angry, automatic. I resist the anger, automatic. Now to choose to respond to the reactivity or to the, what appeared automatically is responsibility because I am responsive, I'm taking inner action and I'm not continue a chain of reaction. That's a form of responsibility. I hope it was uh, helpful. Anybody who asked a question and that was not helpful for them, please, you can ask again or I'll see what other format we can do so I can maybe answer with video. We are, I'm learning this myself, how to use the technology and basically to be more effective so can write it down, write the practices so you can have it, answer in video, have the webinar recorded so you can watch it again. So be patient and persistent with yourself and uh, also with me going through this. I noticed you probably got a lot of mails because the, the two Autom automation were, were, was working, so you got it from the webinar and from the automated email. So uh, I apologize for that. And um, let's see. Prem Shanti. Hi, Prem Shanti. Welcome. Dear Alon, during the last week, I did the exercise you, you suggested. Whatever happens, I don't mind. And the very first day I came to know that I was responsible for having left a window open at work and the shop was robbed. I looked at all the emotions which showed up and reminded myself, whatever happens, I don't mind. And let the emotions go one by one. It wasn't as easy as it sounds like writing it down. I consciously choose to take responsibility for what happened but without blaming myself. I felt like being open to what is is and yesterday I saw the thief and made a photo of him and gave it to the police and he was caught. I'm very grateful for the challenge it brought to me regardless of the outcome in the world. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being honest. So first of all, I, whatever happens, I don't mind. Don't be mistaken. This practice is very deep because it mirrors for you or all of us where we do mind, where we give a lot of meaning to things, where we are reactive. So that way we can take responsibility. I don't mind of what happens doesn't mean you are careless. Being awake and aware, that means you are alert of everything. Awareness is aware of everything. 
that means if you're not fully asleep from the environment and the circumstances, you're aware of everything that is going on around you. There is a story of a Zen master in Japan and he was um, putting the umbrella and the, the flip-flops and all the sandals exactly in the same manner and all the people who practice put it exactly in the same manner they knew where to put it so um, the master came one day and switched it around and they didn't, they, fli they exchanged, they didn't know they, they were uh, um, taking other people's flip-flops and sandals. And he told them, hmm, you have to go and back and practice. Because they were operating automatically. Because they thought that where, where, what they did, that where they left their flip-flops in the past, is still exactly the same way. And they were not meeting every circumstances, every situation fresh. With the eyes wide open means awareness watching through, fully alert, fully aware, and not just mentally lost, wandering, not being conscious. So don't mind what happens. I don't mind what happens. Has a lot of layers. Keep practicing that. Take the practice of not blaming and not complaining for three months. That will show you where there is no responsibility if there isn't, if there isn't. I'm sure all of you are doing an amazing job and you're great. So just take everything every time deeper, another layer, deeper and deeper. So I don't mind what happens, doesn't mean that you're careless. It means that you are unaffected from the vantage point of awareness and that you are not reacting to thoughts and emotions. Okay? Denise, in your videos you mentioned that it is a sense felt experience. Can you explain what this feels like in your experience? Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Dennis, for asking the question. Thank you for having you here. So I invite you, all of you, and each one of you, To recognize if there is a spaciousness with the eyes open that is seen through the eyes. It's like looking through a clear window so you don't see the glass. So, the inner and the outer are not separate. And one recognizes there is no really inner and outer. There is a presence of awareness, and there are thoughts that appear, and feelings or sensations that are generated, and circumstances, and all happen within a field which is empty yet full of presence, alive, vibrant, delicious, silent. Watchful. Presence, awake, and it can take all the flavors, 
because it is one with all experiences, it can be one with all experiences, so it can be an expansion and joyful and bliss and still and stillness and and absoluteness and it can take any quality and remains without any quality. So sense felt experience. It's a sense of I amness. It's indescribable, yet you can know it as yourself. Valsa, hi Valsa, but what if something happens at work at that you don't like? How do you deal with it? First, you don't deal with it. You deal with you. Because automatically, we try to deal with it, with that person, with, we're going instantaneously out, automatically. Instead, we deal with, with the belief I have. I don't like something because I want it to be different. So, first of all, just be responsible that you want it to be different cause you pain and frustration. So you cannot blame it for you feeling pain and frustration you take responsibility that your belief caused you this pain and frustration. So I hope that helps you. Once you examine, and I, I, then I can give you a practice that just a question. So what if something happens at work that I don't like? So let's say you don't like the way they did it and you're upset and you recognize I'm upset because I want it to be different. Then you ask yourself, without this desire of wanting it to be different, How would I respond differently? Without this desire, wanting it to be different, how would I respond differently? Because not liking it is reactivity, reacting. And responsibilities start to respond. So if I take responsibility, I realize I'm not upset or frustrated because of what happened, because of the way she behaved, he behaved, the result that happened. I'm upset because the belief that I want it to be different. So without this desire, how would I respond, it, respond to it differently? That question would open your window of seeing the same circumstances, the same event from a different point of view, from a point of view of clarity, from a point of view of awareness. Because from awareness point of, of view, it's always good. Circumstances are never good or bad. It's always good. 
from the mind it's either good or bad it's either I like it or I don't like it either it's pleasurable or painful so from the point of view of awareness it's always good so can I cultivate looking at everything from it's always good if I can't that's where I have to do the work that's where I have to clear out see it coming to the surface and be released if I can even cultivate that it's always good you can practice this practice it's always good and think it's always good when you think it's bad you ask yourself from the point of view of awareness it's always good so is it bad or always good not it's even it's if it's bad or good it's always good once you see it's always good then you transform your life it's always good you see your life you see the world you see the reality from the point of view of awareness of the absolute which is always good this is just terminology yet it's a pointer for one to be able to discriminate I hope I hope it uh, was helpful Eva what really means to awaken from the from the dream who is the dreamer awareness or the mind awareness never dreams because awareness is changeless is absolute it never moves there is no motion that means a dream is movement a dream is image and is a sequence of images so um, it goes like this when you dream at night and you wake up in the morning when you wake up in the moment the morning you realize it was just a dream when you're dreaming and you realize it's just a dream you are awake while the mind is dreaming yet you're awake you're not the dream that's one another if you are reactive and you are aware of the reactivity you wake up from the dream because the dream the reactivity is only because you identify with a negative belief it shouldn't be this way I don't want it that way I want it to be different there are problems I have problems in my life my life doesn't go the way I want it to be it shouldn't happen to me why life is like that eh, the government is not okay eh, I'm I'm ev all my life is because of what's going on everything it's like I'm basically imagining all these kind of thoughts and I locked I'm locked into it I'm believing it okay so when I realize it I wake up from that if I don't keep feeding it if I shift the attention from it or cut by questioning it or investigating it so for your question what really means to awaken from the dream that's the answer who is the dreamer
what comes for me? You are the dreamer and you are not the dreamer. The dreamer is the I, yet ultimately the real I is not a dreamer, is not a dream. Is the presence of awareness where the I appears and disappears. Yet, direct the mind, dream consciously of what you want but what inspires you so you're not going to be lost in a dream unconsciously that means you're awake while you are directing the mind as the dreamer without identifying with it being you Valsa why are circumstances good from awareness point of view. Why is it always good? Hmm, that's good. Good question. Only the mind labels the circumstances of life, the events of life as good or bad. Awareness doesn't label. So because it is beyond any label, it's not good or bad. So it's always the same. Always the same means it's always accepting. It's always seeing it as good. So it's goodness itself. And Nobody is ever affected by this from the circumstances. So the circumstances are always good because nobody is affected by them. The only thing that affects everyone is the thoughts about the circumstances. So the thoughts about the circumstances can be either or. Either you perceive it as wonderful, amazing, great opportunity, a gift, and you're grateful and you see that it's an opportunity for you to grow and wake up and every experience is a gift or you can see it as bad, negative, victim, helpless and that will affect your experience and that's why from a vantage point of awareness, it's always good. Hannah? Hi, Hannah. If from the awareness point of view, all is good, ah, you like it, I see. So also, serious illness is good, so we shouldn't take care of it. That's not what I said. It's very interesting. We can hear an amazing lecture, discourse, somebody who speaks very well, and there would be a hundred people, and hundred people interpreted the same thing in totally different way. Because we only hear our interpretation of what has been said. So I don't recommend not to take action because from awareness point of view all is good so also serious illness is good from the point of view of awareness there is no illness only from the point of view of the mind there is illness in the body so I think that it's very good to be to take action action from a place of clarity action from 
love from inner strength and when there is a place when there is a illness in the body that means I have to give it love I have to fill the body with the vibration of love I have to give love to the body I have to give love to every thought that arises within me if there is resistance to it I have to give love to the resistance and let go of it if there is frustration about the, the body's illness I have to give love to this fr frustration and let go of it choose to let go of it I have to give love to every corner of the mind I have to give love to every thought I have to meet every thought with unconditional love this is a true healing and then naturally you take the actions that supports and inspires inspires you to really keep giving love to yourself this is why have the courage to really change change your inner world and I mentioned responsibility is giving attention giving love to your true self to every thought that arises within you and every emotion or bodily sensation that is discomfort to one giving love is very powerful it heals the physical disease it heals the emotional pain it heals the mental pain and it heals every aspect of our being and it merges into that which is even beyond love itself yet love can be an expression of that which is beyond so I hope that's clear I didn't say not to take action I noticed that we are actually um, getting to two hours and um, I'll answer the, the last question uh, Denise I study a course in miracles are you aware of this and if you can if you if you are can you tell us what you think of this teaching thanks Denise I haven't, uh, I've only looked into the Course of Miracles very briefly. I thought it had uh, wonderful ideas and if you take any ideas that really transforms your inner world and brings you clarity and enables you to really reflect and really activate the ability for you to discriminate and recognize who you truly are it doesn't matter what path you take or what philosophy you choose as a boat as long as it empowers you it brings you clarity it gives you more peace more freedom and more inspiration that's really really good so I hope this uh, was helpful for you and uh, if you want to uh, share any comments that you have you're welcome to share if uh, anything you would like that uh, for me to cover as a subject anything you like to go and reflect upon that I will touch for the next week or the following weeks you're welcome and to share I really love to hear what you want what is it that you struggle or you're frustrated with what is it that you want to overcome 
Uh, if there are not clear mm -hmm. tools for you to use, please uh, share with me if you want any practical tool to put into use in, in your daily life. I will be more, hap more than happy to share. And uh, I wish all of you all the very best. I hope you take into, into your heart um, whatever you take in into your heart and that you can uh, recognize who you truly are and work with who you think you are and discriminate who you think you are, examine who you think you are, investigate who you truly are, and be joyful, free, peaceful, clear. I wish you all the very best, countless blessings to all to all of you and have either good night or an amazing rest of the day.